بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد today we're going to recall remind one another about the greatest favor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us and that is to send to this ummah a messenger from themselves from among themselves rehearsing to them the book of Allah and the wisdom the wisdom is this sunnah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Certainly Allah did confer great favor upon the believers when He sent among them a messenger from themselves, reciting to them His verses and purifying them and teaching them the book and the wisdom, although they had been before that in a manifest error. So today's topic is the favor of Allah. by sending this great messenger, the master of the sons of Adam, whose concern was my ummah. While everybody among the sons of Adam, from Adam and on, their slogan at the day of judgment would be, nafsi, nafsi, my soul, my soul. But the prophet, my nation, my nation. And he said, my appointment with you the dating of me and you will be at the pool. And at the day of gathering as well, where he'll be permitted to make sujood beneath the throne of Allah. For Allahu A'lam, how long will this be? Until Allah wills. Then Allah will be saying, Oh Muhammad, raise your head. Ask, you'll be given. Ask, you'll be given. Then the Prophet ﷺ, uh, his reply was, Ummati, Ummati. My nation, my nation. And once the Prophet ﷺ was seen crying, and Allah sent Jibreel to the Prophet ﷺ, saying to him, Your Lord, asks you why you're crying and Allah knows best and the <coughs> Prophet said my nation my nation then Allah said to Jibreel oh Jibreel tell Muhammad we will be pleasing you with your ummah and you will not be forsaking you we'll be pleasing you with your, with your ummah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and that is why I was relating yesterday this beautiful narration that when Aisha radiallahu anha was sitting, waiting for the best mood of the Prophet to catch something she wants. And when he was in the best mood, she said, Oh Rasulullah, make dua for me. Then he said, Oh Allah, forgive Aisha for what had passed of her and what will be coming of her. And what she concealed of sins and what she revealed of sins, forgive her. Then that caused Aisha to, to fall while laughing. She was very happy. But she thought that this is only for her. He said, did my supplication please you, O Aisha? She said, yes, ayu Allah. Why shouldn't, be, why shouldn't it be pleasing me? And you're asking Allah to forgive me? He said, Oh Aisha, Wallahi, this is my supplication in every prayer for my ummah. This is my supplication in every prayer for my ummah. That's his, that's his soft, good nature. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
created him. So that means this ummah was the Prophet's concern. Not only, not only in this life, not only when he was alive, even at the moment when he was about to die. The Prophet ﷺ had a piece of towel that they were putting on him. He was very hot. And he went unconscious. And when he woke, he became conscious. He said, did the Muslims pray? He was replied, no, Rasulullah, and they're still waiting for you. Then he went unconscious. Then he became conscious. Then he said, did the, did the Muslims pray? They said, no, Rasulullah, and they're still waiting for you. Four times. The moment he wakes up, did the Muslims pray? And the last breath of his, his legacy, his reminding, his advice was, As-Salah, As-Salah, As-Salah. Fear Allah for those who are under your authority. Fear Allah regarding those who are under your control, under your authority. Fear Allah for them. So his concern was for the masakin, for the weakened people among his ummah. And that was the last words that he said, alayhi salatu wasalam. Oh, after that, he said something, but not for us. But not for us. That was a reply to Jibreel. When Allah ordered Jibreel to give the Prophet an option, just like what it used to be given to every Prophet before him, whether to choose to live more or to choose what is with Allah. Then the Prophet said, Bal, no, but. That means no, but. No, but Ar Rafiq al A'la, the upper world, the upper companionship. He chose the hereafter. He was given the option. And this is the sign of his truthful prophethood. That when he is given the choice, he doesn't choose the, this life. Unlike what people do. You find a person who's, who's 100, maybe even 120. And he doesn't want to die. But the Prophet ﷺ was given the choice. And he had chosen what Allah has. And he said before he died, when he was able to address his ummah. Among the servants of Allah, there is one servant that, was, that, that he was given the option whether to choose this worldly life or to choose what Allah has. Then he had chosen what Allah has. Then Abu Bakr was heard crying, crying. And he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, we ransom you by our property, by our family, we ransom you. And people were wondering, what's the matter with Abu Bakr crying like this? The Prophet didn't say anything effective. He said, he's talking about a man who was given the option whether to live or to choose what Allah has. Then he had chosen what Allah has. But Abu Bakr knows of the Prophet's speech, what people, they do not know. The Prophet's indications, what people do not know. He understood that this was a farewell words of the Prophet A farewell words of the Prophet to his ummah. Telling them that his time is up. His time is coming. They did not understand. That's why Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, when he saw him like this, he said, Abu Bakr was the most person of the Prophet's words who understand the Prophet so. And he was the most knowledgeable person among us. So the Prophet ﷺ was the greatest favor on this Ummah. Does this Ummah value this? Look at this Ummah outside. Look at his Ummah outside. Look how people deal with the, the, the treasure that the Prophet came with. The Shara of Allah, the law of Allah. Do they practice it? Do they seek to understand it, to learn it? Unfortunately, except little. 
And that is why we are proud to be gathering you, you here with us for this blessed gathering. Bef before the descriptions of the Prophet in the Quran, the Prophet was described in the Torah. In the Torah, Ata ibn Yasar asked Amr ibn al-As, Describe to me Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Yes, I will. Wallahi, I will. Innahu la mawsufun fi al-tawrati bi ba'di sifatihi fi al-Qur'an. He is described in the Torah by little sum of what he is described in the Quran. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. Where is it in the Torah? It's gone. Why? Because people don't have the Torah. No, they, they have it, but they changed it. No, 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 they don't have it. They had to set some alternative. Give it the name of Torah, but they don't have the Torah. Why? Because Allah raised it. As Allah is going to be raising the Quran. As Allah raised already the Injil. People don't understand that. The Jehovah Witnesses got mad with me. They said, you say that people cannot change the words of Allah. That's in your Quran. Okay? So how come we have the Torah and you say it's been changed while the Quran says they cannot change the word of Allah? And by the way, the word of Allah also means His command, His decree. They cannot change it. They cannot change His decree. And that's, that's an answer for these kinds of doubts. And if you bring you the context someday, inshallah, I will show you what does it mean when the word, the word, words of Allah means in the Quran. He's talking about trying to change his command, trying to change his decree. These are the kalimat of Allah. <clears throat> That's why Allah said about Maryam, وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا wa وَكُتُبِهِ The words of Allah and the books of Allah, two distinct things. So, so I said to them, you don't have it to change it. They got really mad at me. I said, you don't have it to change it. It's been raised up. So, this is an ayah, and I believe that this ayah is in the Torah, is in the Torah of Allah, which he raised up. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. O Prophet, we have sent you as a witness and a good tiding giver and a warner وَحِرْزًا لِلْأُمِّيِّينَ and a fortress for the Ummiyeen for the Arabs in the, in the peninsula أَنْتَ عَبْدِي وَرَسُولِي سَمَّيْتُكَ الْمُتَوَكِّلِ you are my servant, my messenger I, I described you, called you the mutawakkil the real depender on Allah the real depender لَيْسَ بِفَضْ he's not fussy, he's not blunt ولا غليظ نور هارد ولا صخاب في الأسواق neither a shouter yeller in the market places ولا يجزي بالسيئة السيئة and he does not uh, confront the evil with evil ولكن يعفو ويصفح but he forgives and forbears and pardons وَلَنْ يَقْبِضَهُ اللَّهِ And Allah will not be grabbing his soul. حَتَّى يُقِيمَ بِهِ الْمِلَّةَ الْعَوْجَاءِ Until he straightens through him the unstraighted way. بِأَنْ يَقُولُوا And that is for them to say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ There is no God but Allah. وَيَفْتَحُ بِهِ أَعْيُنًا عُمْيَا And by him Allah will be opening a blind eyes. وَآذَانًا صُمَّا And blood ears. وَقُلُوبًا غُلْفًا And wrapped hearts. Narrated by Al-Bukhari. Allah Akbar. 
So our need in knowing the shama'il, the characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu is over every kind of need and necessity. So our love to him will be stronger. So our follow to him will be greater. Our adab will be greater because he had been given the best adab ethics. That Aisha radiallahu anha, Aisha was so smart. She was asked to detail to her the manners of the Prophet وسلم, but she breathed it with one word saying كان خلقه القرآن His manners was the Quran period Allah So by following him adhering to his sunnah by this the people of guidance can be signified from the people of misguidance لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ There had been for you in the Messenger of Allah a good model to follow, pattern to follow. For who? لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا الله For the one who believes in Allah and the hereafter, and he remembers Allah much, much. Khadija radiallahu anha. No wonder the Prophet said, Allah provided me her love. Inna Allah razaqani hubbaha. Provided rizq. Loving of Khadija was rizq from Allah to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. How great is this? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa felt confused about what happened to him, and he has, wallahi, the right to be confused. He was in a cave, and suddenly he saw a man. You know what people do when they see a man or a ghost or a spook or something. You know what they say and how they run like chickens. Wallahi, faster than the Concord. <laughs> faster than the Concord. The Prophet saw a spook, a jinn, shaitan, shaitan himself while he was praying. And the devil has a piece of fire stone in his hand by which he wants to throw on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet, he was he's at the beginning, in the front, and he is led by people. He, he, he's the leader of the people. People are led by him. He didn't back off. No. But he said, Al'anuka bi la'matillah. Al'anuka bi la'matillah. Al'anuka bi la'matillah. Now he was speaking. He said, I curse you with the curse of Allah. And that is not speech. It's supplication as well. I curse you with the curse of Allah. Then he did not back off this devil. Then the Prophet said, A'udhu billahi mink. And then he retreated. I seek refuge with Allah against you. But he saw a different person in the cave who said to him, Iqra. And you know the story. He said, I cannot read. What, or what shall I read? Different interpretation. ما أنا بقارئ it, it sounds, what will I be reading? Or, ما أنا بقارئ ما نافية That means, I do not read. Allahu alam, that's not the case now. But when he came to Khadija, he said, oh Khadija, what is the matter with me? I fear, I have fear for myself. Then Aisha, uh, Khadija radiallahu anha said, Kalla, Kalla wallah, Abshir, what a woman. 
What a great one. No, I swear by Allah, I have the good news. What did, she, what did she mean? Look how the characters of the Prophet, the manners of the Prophet ﷺ was counted as if she was writing, preparing. What did she say? إِنَّكَ لَتَصْدُقُ الْحَدِيثِ She began with the truthfulness of the Prophet. You never lie. You are truthful in speech. وَتَصِلُ الرَّحِمِ And you join the kinship. وَتَحْمِلُ الْكَلْبِ And you lift up the weak. You give him a lift. وَتَقْرِ الضَّيْفِ And you honor the guest. You don't put in your plate more than the, what you put in the plate for your guest. وَتَقْرِ الضَّيْفِ And you honor the guest. وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبِ الْحَقِّ And you are helpful regarding all matters of truth. You're supporter for all matters of truth. How come Allah will be subjecting such person to the jinn and to the, to the devils? Therefore those who suffer the attack or the appearance of a ghost, they should be blaming themselves. They should know that the problem is in them. I've been hearing this word, let's get out of this house. I don't want to live in this house anymore. No, my dear. Your house here is haunted before. Your, the house in your heart is, haunt, is haunted. Before your house, your home was haunted. Check your heart. Check what is haunted in you inside here. Before deciding to leave the house there. The problem is in, in, the, is in you, not in your house. Khadija radiallahu anha, she, subhanallah, she gave him a list of his good characteristics and manners. You speak the truth. You join the kinship. You lift the disabled, the unable person. You host the guest. And you are helpful over all matters of good. Khalas? The Prophet relaxed. Subhanallah. And you blame him for loving Khadija radiallahu anhu. Allahu Akbar. But there was another person whose character not 100%. No one can be equally identical to the Prophet in his matters, manners. But that was Abu Bakr. When he was about to leave Mecca because he, he wasn't secure there and and he knew that people are deciding and plotting to expel him out of Mecca. He was asked by Ibn Daghina, Where are you going, Abu Bakr? <sighs> he said, I want to take a tour in the land, worship my Lord. Tourism today, having fun. But they don't know something special kind of tourism. And that is having worship. They want to feel free. But Abu Bakr wants to feel free in his worship. People risk their freedom of worship for the freedom of life. <coughs> With Abu Bakr was something different. Allahu Akbar. Then Ibn Daghina said, No, a person like you should neither be ousted nor he should go out. You are supporting the necklace, the one who has nothing, ma'doom. rahim, And you join, you are so keen to join the kinship. And you honor the, and you honor, you are hospitable for the guest. And you are a supporter for all matters of truth. Subhanallah. And that man was not Muslim. And he mentioned the words which are identical to the descriptions of Khadija to the Prophet ﷺ. And you're asking me why Abu Bakr was the closest always to the Prophet in his immigration, in his sleep, in his residence. And you blame why the Prophet said, let Abu Bakr lead the prayer when the Prophet was sick. Allahu Akbar. By Allah. Allah did not only support his messenger for this ummah, 
but he support the greatest companion ever for this prophet. The story is long about this. Ibn Dagana said, I'm your supporter, get back. He went to Quraysh and he said to those tyrant people of Quraysh, Abu Bakr should not be ousted. Don't you know that he, he's a generous person? He gives the, he gives the poor, he, etc., etc. They said, all right, let him, worship, let him stay in his house. Worship his God as much as he wants but does not call people for what Muhammad was calling. Ibn Daghina told Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr accepted. But as at the, at the yard, the, na- the next yard, which is included in, in his house, it occurred to him to build a small place there as a place of masjid, and he was worshipping Allah there. But the, the worship of Abu Bakr was fitna for the woman, for the children of Quraysh, they saw his spirituality, such spirituality, that was about to let him accept Islam. Then Quraysh called this man, Ibn Dagina, again. Look, we told you, we allowed you to keep him as much as he worshipped his Lord inside his house, but now he built a masjid beside his house, and we fear fitna for our women and our children. They're about to, to accept his religion. So... We don't want to be bad to you, Ibn Dagina. We don't want to do something to break our promise. And they used to be known with, with the word. When they give a word, khalas. Despite their shirk, despite their pagan uh, worship. <coughs> then Ibn Dagina went to Abu Bakr and told him about this. And he said, it's up to you now. I can't. Now there are pressures over me. So see what you do. He said, then... <sighs> Uh, then uh, he said, uh, no. I return to you your sponsorship. It was beautiful. I return to you your sponsorship. And I am pleased with the sponsorship of Allah to me. Allahu Akbar. And then he decided to leave and to go. So you can see the the beautiful characters and manners of those two greatest men on earth. Wallahi, Abu Bakr is the best man on earth. Excluding who? The prophets and the messengers. He's number one man on earth. Among the best words that are love of the Prophet Wasallam. Well, let's leave that now. Let's talk about how he looks, alayhi salatu wasalam. How he looks at his status. So he, he has great sifat khalqiyya wa khuluqiyya. Great descriptions. Khalqiyya, physical, wa khuluqiyya, characters and manners. So his body was the most beautiful face he had, alayhi salatu wasalam. He wasn't long, tall, and he wasn't shorty, but in between. You'll see after my description that he's always middle, in everything, he's middle. كان مربوعا ما بين المنكبين His shoulder was huge, huge shoulder, uh, shoulder he has. عليه الصلاة والسلام له شعر يبلغ شحمة أذنيه يعني he has hair that reaches here عليه الصلاة والسلام كان ضخم الرأس واليدين والقدمين his hands, his head, his feet were huge وكان وجهه مثل الشمس والقمر His face was just like, as, as rounded as, this, as the sun, as the moon, rounded. Many companions, they said, they used to say, I can't, I can't keep looking at him like this by one time for long. I can't. Yeah. His uh, hair wasn't uh, 
curly too much, but wavy a little bit like this, but not curly and not very soft. In between, the hair is in between. His hair was extremely black. His eyes were akhal from kohal, as if as if he put something very black in them. If he steps by his foot, he steps fully, like this. كان إذا سر استنار وجهه كأنه قطعة قمر. When the Prophet ﷺ seems looked viewed to be happy, his face looks like a piece of moon. وكان إذا سر استنار وجهه كأنه مذهبة. And when he feels happy, smiling ﷺ. As if it's a piece of gold that shines, I saw to when he smiles. And he used to be laughing, but his extreme laugh was described that to the extent that his teeth here are shown. Some people they keep laughing until they fall down. And sometimes the high sounds of those who laugh is, is becoming really disturbing. The Prophet wasn't like this. Ah, وَلَيْسَ بِصَخَّابٍ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ He was, as we described him, he was not a shouter person in the, in the marketplace. You know those people who shout in the marketplace. He wasn't like that. كَانَ كَثِيرَ شَعْرِ اللِّحْيَةِ His beard was thick. وَكَانَ يُصَفِّرُ لِحْيَتَهُ بِالْوَرْسِ And he used to be Coloring his lihya, his beard, with words which is a plant that gives almost a yellow color, dark yellow color to the beard. وَكَانَ لَا يَرُدُّ الطِّيبِ He used never to reject perfume. Never. وَكَانَ يَأْخُذُ كَانَ يَقْبَلُ الْهَدِيَّةِ وَيَرُدُّ الصَّدَقَةِ he used to be accepting the gift, but returning the sadaqah, the donation. Because donation is haram on him and on his family. Doesn't seem, doesn't sound that he is a legislator by himself and he's a liar. If he's claiming prophethood, he'll be encouraging people to donate. As those people of the vowing boxes, they, they encourage people to put for the dead people because they know that's going to be their income. Playing with people's emotions, deceiving them. So the Prophet ﷺ is haram on him to take donation. To the extent that he saw his grandson Al Hassan, he was walking beside him with him, then suddenly Al Hassan picked a piece of date falling on the, on the ground. The Prophet said, look at, the, look at the trustworthiness of this messenger. He said, kakh, kakh, leave it, leave it. It may be falling from the property of donation and charity. To this extent. كان يعرف بريح الطيب إذا أقبل يعني his beautiful smell will be sensed before Sensing his or knowing his existence, presence. Yani, the beautiful perfume that smelled from him preceded his coming. <coughs> As for his speech and his silence, he used to be longly silent. Little in laughing. وكان لا يضحك إلا تبسما. And he used not to be laughing except by smiling. <laughs> if you see those, there, there's a cult in Christianity called the Lofters. Oh my God. 
Oh my God. They keep laughing, laughing, laughing until all fall down on the ground and they don't know why they're laughing. And they think that the Holy Spirit is giving them a joke, making laugh. Poor people. He doesn't laugh too much. He keeps thinking. Hmm. And he used to say, Wallahi, لو تعلمون ما أعلم. I swear by Allah, if you know, if you just know what I know, لضحكتم قليلا, you'll be laughing a little, ولا بكيتم كثيرا, and you'll be crying a lot, ولا ما تلذذتم على الفرش, and you'll not be feeling joy on your beds. Allah. And once he was, he was saying, this day. I haven't seen anything like what I've seen today. They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what did you see today? He said, I saw Jannah and Nar. I've seen the fire and paradise. And he used to be, whenever he speaks a word, he repeats it three times until it will be understood. وَإِذَا أَتَى عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ فَسَلَّمَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَلَّمَ عَلَيْهِمْ ثَلَاثًا And if he come to people, he gives, makes salam three times. His beautiful voice was significant. His voice was like this. It does not let the sleeping person wake up. But it let the one who was awake hear clearly. S significant descriptions of the Messenger of Allah. وَكَانَ صَوْتُهُ لَا يُوْقِذُ النَّائِمُ وَيُسْمِعُ الْيَقْضَامُ His voice does not let the sleeping person wake up. But it enables the, wake, the awaking person, the one who is awake, to hear clearly. Clear for those who are awake. Soft, to the extent that it does not let the sleeping person wake up. How do you, how would you be imagining such significant, significant characters in this prophet, even the way he speaks? <clears throat> and as for repeating his salam, he used to be repeating three, otherwise he go. Three times or he goes. Once he visited Sa'd, <coughs> <clears throat> so he said, Assalamu alaikum. Then the wife of the Prophet uh, of uh, Sa'd wanted to say, Wa alaikum assalam, ya Rasulullah. He said to her, Shh, don't say that. Wa alaikum assalam. He went like this. He doesn't want the Prophet to hear him. Why? You may ask, uh, ask yourselves, why? He wanted the Prophet to repeat his salam. Because his salam is supplication. And Sa'ad said to his wife, said the Prophet repeated, for it contains barakah for our house, for our children. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful society was this. <coughs> so the Prophet ﷺ said, Assalamu alaikum. Then Sa'ad said, Wa alaikum salam. Then he repeated it, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Then, as the Prophet started to return, Sa'ad went out and he said, Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ya Rasulullah, we just wanted to exceed the barakah from your salam. Wa kana kalamuhu yafhamuhu kullu man sami'a. And his speech was very clear to everyone who hears him. كَانَ يُحَدِّثُ حَدِيثًا لَوْ عَدَّهُ الْعَادُّ لَأَحْصَحَ He used to be speaking such way of speech that if a person wants to count what he was saying, how, how many words he was saying, he would have been able to count it. وَكَانَ يَمْشِي مَشْيًا يُعْرَفُ فِيهِ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ بِعَاجِزٍ وَلَا كَسْلَانٍ 
the way he used to be walking alayhi salatu wasalam very well known that he is not he is neither kaslan nor disabled or unable to walk always awake but once he was on his cattle and I think Al uh, Abu Qatada, I think, he realized that the Prophet was falling like this. So he was lifting the Prophet's back all the way. Allah Akbar. All the way. Then the Prophet suddenly woke up and he said, <coughs> Ah. The Prophet said when he woke up, since when you've been lifting my body like this? He said, Oh Prophet, all the night. Allahu Akbar. Then the Prophet said, Look at the kindness of Rasulullah. He said, Hafidak Allahu bima hafidta bihi nabiyya. Allahu Akbar. May Allah preserve you as you've been preserving his Prophet. So beautiful. They used to be loving the Prophet and they used to be truthful. They were not red Indians as those people they tried to show, oh this, this is, you know, uh, backwarded uh, century, age, la wallah. Once Abu Ayyub al-Ansari and his friend, his brother, <coughs> they, went, <coughs> they came with the Prophet والسلام, so they had a house they wanted to live in, to stay in. <clears throat> so the Prophet ﷺ went to the ground floor. And Abu Bakr, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, he was about to get the upper floor. He said to his friend, where is the Messenger of Allah? He said, down. He said, La Allah, I do not step an up floor where the Prophet is down. If the Prophet ﷺ said, I love this kind of food. Then many companions used to say, Wallahi, I still love that food until I die. Because the Prophet loved it. The Prophet was so humble to the extent that he was invited for food? No. Vinegar! It was presented to him. And he said, Na'mal idam al khal. What a great meal is vinegar. One of the companions said, I used to, I decided to love, I love the vinegar since the Prophet said that, and I'll keep loving it until I die. SubhanAllah, different world. I don't want to have gadgets. I don't want to have electronics. I would love if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will enable me to return to such century. What do we do nowadays? We are troubled in every aspect in our life. We're troubled. <clears throat> Among the most beloved actions of the Prophet to my heart, when he enters the house, he begins with what? Hmm? Salam, so, um, yes, no, no, actions, actions. Actions. Yes, Using the siwak. Yes, Who among you will be feeling disgusted from the smell of the Prophet? <laughs> but he has a high sense. Even if he is the Prophet, he has to, to use the siwak. As for us, no. Your treatment is bad to your wife, and your smell is bad. But she must. She must meet you with a kiss on your mouth, even your, if your mouth stinks. Even if your mouth stinks. She's the wife. And you'll be shouting, where's my food? Uh, it's not ready. Not ready yet? You're divorced. <laughs> yeah. You're divorced. The Prophet ﷺ uses the siwak. And after the siwak, he prayed two rak'ah. Two rak'ah are very important. It will change your temper. So the devil will not get in with you. 
And he says, do we have food? They say, no. He says, then I'm fasting. <coughs> Doesn't get angry? No food? Then I'm fasting. Allahu Akbar. Among his way of life, choice between two things, but he chooses what is easier. That's his sunnah. That's why when people try to trouble us, you know, if you say this is bid'ah, they say, "Oh, okay, bid'ah, oh, okay." Uh, so don't use the train; it's bid'ah. Don't use the airplane; it's bid'ah. We say to them, "No, it's not bid'ah." By the evidence of this character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had never been given a choice between two things one is easy and one is difficult but he used to be taking what? Easy. what is easier so the train is easier than the camel so that's sunnah that's sunnah unless if it's a matter of sin sometimes what is easier is sin so the Prophet will be more, the mostly distant away from it. Unlike people. Some people, they, you say, I'm Hanafi. But this matter in Hanafi madhab is difficult. I'm Shafi'i now. But um, he finds out that in, in Maliki madhab it's easier. I'm Maliki now. So he tried to swim between the waves of the different madhabs. See what is easier. What is easier? It must be to him to the truth, subhanAllah. Where is he? From the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu Allahu Akbar. I love this woman. I want to marry her. But you know, according to Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, there's no nikah without wali. I'm Hanafi now. This is how they play games. It shouldn't be. What is... There is no say after the Prophet's say. And the Prophet said, I said to Salam, there is no nikah without wali. And this hadith is mutawatir. Now this is not our topic. We're not going to bring it to these issues. But showing what is the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu In which we lack, Wallahi, to really follow. Absolutely as should be. <laughs> he never dispraised any kind of food. By saying, I don't like it. If he desired it, he eat it. If he did not desire it, he leaves it without speaking. He used to be accepting any vegetarian. Even a Jewish woman invited him. She, you know the story. She poisoned the sheep. But she invited him and he accepted it. Oh my God, if you see me as an imam going to a rabbi's house and accepting his invitation. Our imam, mm -mm. seems we have to sack him. He's a Jew. He has some, he's good man, but he's a Jewish inclination. <laughs> a Jewish trend, Jewish trend. The Jews used to be attending the prophet's assembly. That, that thing doesn't, we don't know. It is true that the matter of Jerusalem is really important to us, Wallah, what those people are doing. But it doesn't mean that uh, you boycott all your relationship with Allah. Wallah. If I have, if I'm able to give them da'wah, I will not be, I will not be hesit hesitating at all. They used to be attending the Prophet's assembly. <coughs> the Prophet used not to say to them, get out, you're a Jew. But they used to do this, achoo, faking, sneezing. And they say, Alhamdulillah. Then the Prophet laughs, he smiles and says to them, Yahdikumullah. Instead of, Yarhamukumullah. May Allah guide you. Instead of, May Allah mercy you. Huh? So rude. They don't want to become Muslims, but they want to be granted mercy. SubhanAllah. He begins with uh, those whom he meet with, with salam. Even if they are children, even if they are children, a small concubine, young concubine, used to be catching his hand and say, Oh, Prophet, come with me. And he used to be going with him. So humble. Whenever he passes by people, rubbing their head, children, rubbing their head, 
asking Allah for them, giving salam on them. Very soft. You want to be, you want the description of his softness by one who worked for him for 10 years? That's Anas. He said, my hand had never touched any hand. Oh, no, no, not, not any hand. I'm sorry. My hand had never touched silk or the badge ever softer than the, the, the palm of Rasulullah sallallahu And he used never to say to me, why didn't you do for something I did not do? Or for something I did, why did you do? Ten years. And the, this word had not been including in his commands to Anas sallallahu Very soft treatment. Very soft treatment. Allahu Akbar. And sometimes, if he has no wudu, and there's no water, he used to be making tayammum to return the salam on the person. SubhanAllah. He used not to be signified between his companions by special clothes. You know, when a, when a big religious symbolic spear, spear or fear? Oh. Well, some fears are spears nowadays. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> yeah. He is not to be wearing any significant thing to the extent that a Bedouin may come to the master and say, Where's Muhammad among you? Where's Muhammad? Then the Prophet says, It's me. And when he enters an assembly, he doesn't seek the, the middle place among people. He keeps going to the, into the you know, living room, going until the majlis, the assembly, ends with him. Doesn't seek to be in the middle. If you stop it, it will be noisy for the... So as we said, the ease is his sunnah. That's why when he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal and Musa, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he sent them to Yemen. He gave them instructions, beautiful instructions. Very much breathed instruction. Very fruitful and useful if people practice it. Wallahi, we need it for each one of them, each one of us to practice it with his brother. He said to them, Bashira. وَلَا تُنَفِّرَا Tanfir, Tafshir is to give good news by practice. Good news in practice. وَلَا تُنَفِّرَا And do not discourage people from accepting the truth. But the beautiful, the word in Arabic is beautiful. بَشِّرَا وَلَا تُنَفِّرَا وَيَسِّرَا وَلَا تُعَسِّرَا وَتَطَاوَعَا وَلَا تَخْتَلِفَا The Prophet was given the, 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 the much less words but comprehensive meaning and fruitful words. Very little words but very fruitful. Bashira wala tunafira. Give good news but don't discourage people. Don't let people hate what you have. Wayasira wala tuasira. Make things easy. Don't seek to make it difficult. وَتَطَاوَعَ وَلَا تَخْتَلِفَ And be obedient to one another and do not disagree. Tell me if this ummah had practiced only these 